Alright, so welcome back to another video. As always, do me a favor, drop a like, subscribe, and leave a comment today. You see what we're reacting to. We're reacting to Larry Bird's most savage moment. Now, Larry Bird was known to be a tough guy, but was he a savage? Well, we'll come here and find out. So let's hop straight into it. As always, the video link is always in the description, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Alright, like I said, the video link is always in the description. And do me a favor, uh, check out some of the other videos on the channel. I'm sure y'all will enjoy them. We make a lot of uh, amazing basketball content on this channel that includes reaction, quizzes, talking about trades, and stuff like that. So just check out some of the other content that may say let's hop straight into this uh video retired nba players often like to compare the good times i'm expecting today. some good some honest, good stories about larry like bird a broken record machine at this point they often say players today are soft and they can't play in our era they are always saying that i uh i'm not about to debate that here but what i will say is what is probably inarguable is the fact that players talked a lot more smack back in the day yeah larry and bird got to be one of the best trash the talkers only ever only larry bird aka larry legend today we'll take a look at some of his most savage moments during his rookie year reggie miller and the pacers were down three points against the celtics with 20 seconds left in the game to stop the clock the pacers went to the foul game but unfortunately they fouled Larry Bird. Nah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bird went to um, Larry, Miller tried to dis Isn't Larry like a career 90% free throw shooter or something like that? You don't want to foul Larry Bird from the free throw line. That's something you don't want to do. his concentration by getting into his head. He was like, hey, hey. But before Miller even blurted out another <laughs> word, Larry cut him off and shushed him up by saying, you got to be kidding me. Rook, you got to be kidding me. Rook, I'm the best shooter in the league right now in the league understand wow if you're up here trying to say something bird would calmly sink the crucial free throws to beat the pacers 119 to 113. he also dropped 34 points along with seven rebounds four assists and two steals to send out a major statement to the young reggie <laughs> yeah yeah don't do that went onwards reggie learned to zip his mouth whenever larry was around anyway guys off to the next story in 1986 all right larry bird is one of those people that they feed off of trash talking like if you say something to them they're going to say something back and it's only going to fuel them and we've seen larry bird was really out there doing that larry bird was at the peak of his greatness winning his third consecutive mvp as well as grabbing the finals mvp trophy while averaging 25.8 points a ball game he was so good this particular year that on the night of valentine's he simply decided that he would not be using his right hand against the Blazers. What? Here's exactly what he said. Let me let me oh, hear. It's the last game of the trip. I'm gonna play this one left-handed. No well, way. At least through three quarters. True to his word. Bird no. The hearts of the Blazers on V Day by dropping 47 points while mostly using his left hand. That's what. That's why they call him Liar Legend. Stuff like that. That is that's insane. And one. After the game, he was asked why he refused to use his dominant hand, to which he replied, I'm saving my right hand for the Lakers. Man. <laughs> wow. Cold blooded. That's, yeah, that's cold blooded. Now, if you think that was savage, wait until you hear this next story about Dennis Rodman. Thanks. And in game five of the Eastern Conference Finals in 1987, he pushed the boundaries further by saying an off color remark to Larry. Oh, uh, what? Boston, what is that? I made the most wrong decision that a person can make. At the time, I didn't know any better because I was so used to being in the projects. God, I was young and stupid. So after <laughs> the game, I said if Larry Bird was black, he would be just an average basketball player. Oh, That's wow. Wow. Hold up. And I was in Boston. Larry heard the interview and was not wow. happy about Rodman's comment. In game seven, Bird had his payback and he went to destroy Rodman with his skills and his mouth. Oh, look at that pull According up. to Rodman, here's what went down when he was guarding him. I would be all over him trying to deny him the ball. And all Larry was doing was yelling at his teammates. I'm open. Hurry up before they notice nobody is guarding me. Then he would stick an elbow in my jaw and stick Ooh. a jumper in my face. Then he would start in on my coach. Coach, you better get this guy out and send in somebody who's going to D me up. Because it's too easy when I'm wide open like this. Oh, that's a young Dennis Rodman too. But like, look, even Dennis Rodman said it. Larry Bird was in a league of his own when it came to knocking down long-range bombs during his heyday. Don't talk trash, Larry when Bird. The NBA Finals introduced the three-point shooting contest in 1986. He quickly cemented himself yeah, as the most shrimp. lethal marksman in the league. In 1988, heading to his third three-point contest, Bird was extremely confident that he'd bag his third consecutive three-point title. 
Right before the competition began, Bird tried to mess with his opponent's heads by going to the locker room and saying that the contest was already over before it even started. Legendary trash talking right there. Who's playing? For, did you really say that? Who's playing for second? Yeah, I did. I, <laughs> now, on top of this trash talk, Bird didn't even bother to remove his warm-up jacket during the contest. And guess what? That is by far one of the most legendary moves in like, three-point contest history. The man was so confident that he was going to win. He didn't even take off the warm-up. Think about that. That's, that's, oh, wow. He won. Jeez, guys. This is a dude who looked his opponents in the eye and said, who's coming in second? Yeah, that's something crazy to say. Removing his warm-up jacket. And one, talk about confidence. Anyway, guys, our next story happened in 1992 when Bird was part of the Dream Team, and it goes okay. something like this. So, the head coach of Team USA personally handpicked a bunch of talented college players to have a scrimmage with the Dream Team to gauge their chemistry. The first run as a unit of the Dream Team didn't go as planned, and shockingly, the college prospects won easily behind closed doors. Right after the embarrassing loss, Rodney Rogers, who was playing for the side of the college team, was feeling upbeat about. If I'm not like, if I'm not mistaken, that college team, who what was it? Christian Leitner, Grant Hill, and who else was on that? Was it Chris Weber? Like, like that team had a lot of good players, and like that first game, like the first scrimmage game, I, I, if I can recall, well, I, I can't recall because I wasn't born, but I heard. That the college team won, and then after that, Larry Bird, MJ, and Magic didn't just let loose on them boys. It literally just destroyed them. About their win. And during the heat of the moment, he wasn't able to control his mouth and said something like this to Bird. Hey, Larry, you ain't hit a jumper since 84. Ooh, don't say that. After Rogers said those words, Bird didn't say a single word, Ooh. but everyone on the Dream Team knew that uh, Larry took it personally. Yeah. In the next day's practice, as everyone expected, Larry brought Rogers to school. I mean, he was scoring bucket after bucket over his head, and what's even crazier about all of this is the fact that Bird was telling Rogers how he would score on him. Jamal Mashburn's witnessed firsthand how Bird murdered Rogers in that game, and here's what he <laughs> said. Magic Johnson fed Larry Bird the ball, probably about eight times in a row down the court. Larry got the ball on Rodney Rogers, and every time he was about to make a move, he told him what he was going to do. One dribble, pull up, going left, off the glass, bucket. One dribble, going right, spin, shot, bucket. He scored nine times or eight times in a row. I, I, I've always said, if a person can tell you what they're going to do and then actually do it, you got to respect them. Like, like for Larry Bird to do that, what is it, eight or nine times? All I'm saying is that's Larry Legend for a reason. Left the court to go lay down because he couldn't sit on a bench because of his back injury and said, Young fella, look like 84, huh? <laughs> Dominic Wilkins emerged as one of the fiercest rivals of Larry Bird in the mid-80s, but during his rookie season, he had a rude awakening when he found out that Bird wasn't the kumbaya type of guy that you can easily be friends with. According to the Human Highlight Reel, Bird rejected his friendly approach during one of their early matchups, and here's the full story in detail. One of the first times I ever played against him, I went out for the tip and I went to shake his hand. He just stood there and looked at me stone-faced with his hands behind his back. I was like, whoa. Then we were getting ready for the No, yeah, that's mean. Yeah, that's crazy. Along in this league, Holmes. I couldn't believe it, but it happened so fast. I didn't know what to What? Do. Then they had the ball, and I was on him, and he said, I don't know why they got you guarding me, Holmes. You can't guard me. Then swish, he had a three. Then he came down again and said, they made a mistake putting you on me, Holmes. And he took another three. Though Bird initially got the upper hand, Dominic became so furious with Bird's trap. At that point... That's just disrespect. Like, like Larry Bird was on something that night. Like that right there is just straight up disrespect in like the worst way. That's that. Wow. Okay, I'm shocked. Trash talk game. That when the opportunity for payback presented itself, he put him on a poster with a monstrous throwdown. Ooh. Oh my God. Sit down, Larry. After that dunk, Wilkins finally earned the respect of Bird, but not without some extra dish of trash talk in the end. According to Dominic, Bird got the last laugh. He got up and said, I like you, rookie. You've got guts. I was happy for a second, and then he said, but I'm still going for 40 on you tonight. True to his word, Bird would deliver yet another big game and grab the win for the Celtics, and though he only managed to score 39 that game, he proved once again that you can't outclass Larry Legend, even if you're as legendary as Dominic Wilkins. 
Anyway, on to another story here. Larry Bird is a competitive guy, as we can all see, and in this tale, he uh, wanted to prove that he's the greatest Celtic ever. You see, at the time, the Celtics' record for most points in a single game was held by Bird at 53 points. But then on March 3rd, 1985, his teammate Kevin McHale scored 56 points. Shout out Kevin McHale. After that, Bird pretty One much the echoed what Thanos said to Thor. He didn't say, you should have gone for the head, but he did say, you should have gone for 60. Mm. Well, just nine days later, on the night of March 12th, 1985, the Celtics traveled to the Big Easy to face the Atlanta Hawks. And, uh... Bird dropped 60 on the Hawks, which effectively erased the record previously set by McHale, which lasted only for you, nine days. You did to your own teammate, Larry. Another teammate, Robert Parrish, said this about Bird that night. He told us at halftime that nobody could stop him, so just give him the ball and get out of the way. Okay, like, I know I keep pausing it. The video's almost over. But I feel like Robert Parrish is one of the most forgotten NBA legends. Like, like y'all agree with me? Like, like, Robert Parrish was extremely good throughout his career. And I just feel like people just forget all about Robert Parrish. And I, I don't know why. Like, I can't tell you why. Then he went out and started taunting the Atlanta players on the floor, the ones on the bench, their coaches, even the referees. He was talking so much trash, he was buried in it. It was one of those nights when he could have drop kicked the ball in. I loved <laughs> it. What a way to break your teammate's scoring record. Plus, get 60 points by trash talking your way there anyway guys all right and there you have it as we know larry bird is literally one of the best trash talkers ever along as being one of the best players ever so it makes sense that he was talking trash and being that good and he's had some savage moments like that uh thing with dominique wilkins i'm still surprised about because like that was just blatant disrespect it i was I, i'm still shocked about that but is there any more larry uh, bird moments that y'all know that he's been savage and stuff like that as always in the comments but yeah as always drop a like subscribe leave a comment and i'm gonna catch you in this video we out of here peace